on a fresh word. Pastor Andre gives us a fresh perspective on faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says now, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What is faith? How does faith work? Is my faith built upon that which I can see? Join us as Pastor Andre answers these questions. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And like I said, I won't be with you very long. In today's society, we are constantly bombarded by the complexities of the thing that we call life. And sometimes we must take a step back to realize that the enemy of God, through sleight of hand, has played a magician's trick in our lives. In fact, his antics are so precise that he has bamboozled us into believing that somehow our destiny is tied to the things that are around us. He has hoodwinked us into thinking that we are only as great as our paychecks, our bank accounts, and the best houses and cars that money can afford. And that somehow we are validated by our system of monetary value and, and our greatest achievements. And because we live in a dog-eat-dog -dog world, a world that is the survival of the fittest, whereby only the strong survive, in submitting ourselves to this self-centered, fatalistic, false system of faith, we have denigrated ourselves to the point where we believe that evil is good, right is wrong, and as long as a majority of the spiritually bankrupt and self-righteous people agree, where have we gone as a nation? How did we get here as a church? How do we get here as a society? How do we get to a place where we're comfortable taking up residence in the desert? First Timothy 4, 1 through 2 says that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. It is time for us to stand up and fight. Your reality is not your truth. Your present situation does not dictate your destiny. Things are not what they always appear. And if things are not always appear, then what is our reality? Glad you asked. In order to understand this, we must understand what faith is all about. The title of the message is, Things Are Not Always What They Appear. So we must first understand what faith is about. First, faith expresses itself in three different ways. Faith expresses itself in three different ways. It expresses itself first in substance, or it expresses itself in substance or the residue or the thing that's left over of faith. It is the byproduct of that which is left over. Just bear with me for a moment. I'll put this paper aside. Take this paper and put this aside. <laughs> so what faith does, it expresses itself in substance. And so in order to learn, to understand what substance is, the definition of substance is matter. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. This podium is matter. I am matter. This microphone is matter. This place that we're in is matter. Anything that has mass and takes up space. And so as I start looking at the scripture, I begin to ask myself, how is it that faith can be the substance of something hoped for? Hope is an immaterial thing. It's a thought. It's an ideal. It has no substance in matter. So how is it? That faith can be the substance of something that I'm hoping for that don't even exist. It contradicts itself. It's a it's an oxymoron. It's, it, it don't make sense. It falls under the validity of its own stated purpose. How is it? One of the laws of non-contradiction state that something can't be and cannot be at the same time. In other words, the logic dictates to us that. This podium exists, and it, it, it can exist and not exist at the same time. So how is it? How is it then that faith can be the substance of things hoped for 
and the evidence of things not seen. To get to understand this better, we move from the definition of substance into the word substance itself. We know that substance is anything that has matter and takes up space. We know that. It's something that we can see. It's something that we can connect with in the materialistic world. Anything around us is substance. So we go from there, and then we have to look at the word substance itself. The word substance is made up of two words. It's a prefix sub, which means under or belief, and it's made up of the word stand, which is that which supports. So what does it say? It's the understanding. It's the thing that supports it. It's the thing that we don't see on the other side that holds it all together. That's what it's saying. And when I look at things, I look at it from a different perspective. Because while I see something in front of me, I don't see the thing in front of me, but I see God behind it and holding it all together. Glory be to you. Somebody should have shouted right there. Because somebody understood that even though you see me smiling, I got to laugh to keep from crying. So somebody understood that when you, you see me happy-go-lucky every day, that you don't know how it is when I go home at night, lay that night and cry to God and just say, God, just make it all right. So somebody got to understand. It is, it is not what you see. Oh, you may see the cars and the houses and you might think I got money in the bank, but you don't know how long I'm struggling. You don't know how many jobs I got to work. You don't know what I have to go through to hold it all together. It is a thing behind that which you see. You got to understand it. Verse 3 goes in it and it gives us a little key. It says this and said this and said that we understand that the things that we do see were not bought about by the things that do appear. That God is holding it all together. That is God on the inside. And he, he, he's somewhere holding it all together. He's just beyond the shadows holding it all together. you you got to understand that. See, we have been saved all our life. Some things we went through that we didn't know how we got out. And we, and we scratched our head and we, and we say, Lord, how in the world I made it through? How did I make it over? I, I was in some places that I should have been dead. And I'm saying, God... How is it that I got out of this situation? But it was God holding it all together. It was God who saw fit for me to make it. He said it is the substance of things, the substance of things, not, not the materialistic thing, but it is the, the thing that goes behind it. Because for everything we see in the, in the natural, there's something in the spiritual that mirrors it. And as, and as believers, we got to look at the thing in the spiritual and stop looking at the stuff that is all around us. we got to stop being blinded by the things we see. And we got to start praising God, who is the maker and the creator of heaven and earth. we got to seek God, who is able to that, to do all things. We, we The Bible said we got to seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things. He's going to add to you. It is the substance of things. It is the substance of things. It is the, the things we see around us. Now watch this. It's just the residue of what God has already spoken. It is the, it is the leftover for what God has already spoken. And, 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 and you don't have to be saved to understand that if I, I, I know that God is real. I, I can look around and look at the trees. And in the springtime, how the trees, how the leaves, uh, the trees wrap themselves in glory of their leaves and bow down and begin to worship God. And how, how I can look at the mountain with its snow peak rockies and, and in all its majestic beauty, how it, how it bows down to the King of King and the Lord is of Lord. It, 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 it doesn't take a person to, to say they believe that God to know that. You can look around and see. It don't take a level of faith to look around and see that something exists. I know that exists. But what about if you're going through? What about if you cannot see it? What, what about if you're struggling to understand it? What, what about it if you're just stretching your head? What about it if you knew that God promised you something and it doesn't seem to come to pass? you got to hold on to the fact that God spoke it and I believe it and that settles it. Glory be to God. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. 
And so when we understand that substance is not what we look at every day, but it's deeper than that. It, it goes beyond that. It's, it, it's the thing that holds it all together. Then we got to understand what, what is the evidence of faith. It says faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things not seen. What is the evidence of faith? The evidence of faith is not based upon proof. Evidence is proof. I got proof, so this is my evidence. The evidence of faith is not based upon proof. But the evidence, now watch this, the evidence of faith is based upon something that I don't see, but I know that it's already done. In other words, when the action of what needs to take place takes place, that means that God had already decided to do it. It's already done. Now open your eyes for a moment and let's go into your spiritual eyes for a moment. Let's play this thing out. We're going to the court of God. God is the chief justice. And the devil is the prosecutor. He's the, he's the head prosecutor. So the Bible said when they came up, the council came up to God. The devil presented himself along with the council. And so the chief justice opened up the court and says, uh, uh, do you like to present your case? Where have you been? And so the head prosecutor says that I've been to and fro, in and out of the earth, seeking whom may, I may devour. And so the, so, so the head uh, judge or the supreme judge says to him, he said, have you considered my servant Job? He said, well, I, I've considered Job, but there's only one problem. That head you put around him, if you just take that from around him, I'll make you curse you to your face. So there's two laws that are in, in play in, in this whole scenario. Now watch this. There are two laws that are in play. There's a law called the law of reciprocity. In other words, the law of reciprocity says that whatever you give or if you're nice to somebody, they're going to be nice to you in kind. And then there's another law, that, the third law of Newton, that says this. It says that to every action there must be an equal but opposite reaction. So as strong as the action is an opposite and equal reaction. In other words, the Bible put it in the term, whatever you sow, that you shall reap. Now watch this. So the, the, the chief justice said to the head prosecutor, because Job is doing everything he's supposed to do. He's a, he's a just man. He's an upright man. He does everything. He, he even prays when he sees sin coming. He does all of those things. So by virtue of the law, whatever he does, he has to get back. If he's doing good, I gotta bless him. I gotta give it back to him. I gotta give it back in time because that's that's the way the law is written. And the more good he does, I, I have to give him back even the more. Now watch this. So he said, if you if you take that law, you suspend that law for a minute, I'll make him curse you to your face. So the chief justice said, okay, well, what I'll do, I'll suspend the law, and, 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 you know, you can take everything away from him, but you can't touch his life. Now watch this. Just as the law works, that whatever I give in, I'm supposed to get back equally. Job had got to a place where God needed to bless him doubly. I think you missed that. Job got to a place where God needed to take him to the next level. He did everything he's supposed to do. He did everything right. But sometimes God got to suspend the law to get you to where he wants you to be. Sometimes he got to put the pressure on you to get you where you need to be. And sometimes we take it as, oh, Lord, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. Why me? Why do I have to struggle? Why do I have to go through? Why is it me all the time? The fact of the matter is, if we follow the law, the more that you go through, the more that God is getting ready to bless you. Now, God is getting ready to bless somebody. God is getting ready to take you to the next level. And if you just praise him in spite of your circumstances, he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Glory be to God, all of the things that I'm going
going through. I'm getting ready to get double for my trouble. God is getting ready to take me to a next level. God is getting ready to do some things that people have never seen before. And the only thing my, my enemies can do is sit back and watch. Glory be to God. God, I give you praise. I praise you, God. In the middle of my circumstances, I praise you. In the middle of my struggles, I praise you. In the middle of my going through, I praise you. Glory be to God, I give you praise. <laughs> oh, glory. God said if you just praise him, if you just praise him, he would open up gates of heaven and pour out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive if you just praise him. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. My evidence ain't based on proof. My evidence is based on the fact that while I'm going through, I can continue to praise God. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. God is going to break loose something in your life. He said, if you just praise me. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Sanctify your name, God. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, God. Yes, Lord. In the midst of my circumstances, I'm praising him. In the midst of my going through, I'm praising him. In the midst of everything that people told me I couldn't have, I'm praising you, Lord. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, God. Glory, God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When I come to understand that it's not the things around me, when I came to understand that it was God holding it all together, when I came to understand, and even though I can't figure it out, I know that it's God. Even though it don't make sense, I know that it's God. Glory be to God. Glory be to your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory be to your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just got one more slight point to make. One more. Faith, the third part of faith is the reality of faith. What is the reality of faith? Where does all this make sense? Where does it all tie into? The reality of faith is simply believing in the word of God. Believing in the one who spoke the word from eternity, from the beginning. Knowing that the same God who spoke the word is also the same God who can carry it out. In the beginning, the Bible said that Jesus said, let there be. And if you understand what it says, he said, let there be, and it was. And so God gave whatever was the permission to be, and he allowed it to be at the same time. He allowed it to be at the same time. Glory be to God. There are some things in your life that God gave permission to be, and he allowed it to be in your life for a purpose. But all I got to do is hold on to the word of God. Hold on to the word of God. When everything around me is sinking sand, on the word of God, I stand. So it's simply believing in the word of God. We got to begin to speak those things in our lives as though they were. God gives us permission to speak those things. And it's not permission based on we have the authority just to speak what we want. Because the Bible said we know not what to pray for. But when the word of God meet us on earth, we have the authority to speak it. Just imagine for a moment somebody gave you authority and you didn't utilize it. God has given us authority to speak those things, to speak his word, to hold him at his word. God love when we do that. Glory be to God. Ooh. I just
just thank God for this opportunity. And like I said, I, I wasn't going to be too long. So I'm never that long because I believe that the Spirit of God can give everybody what they need in 15 minutes. We hope you've been blessed by this message. A Fresh Word is the preaching and teaching podcast of Pastor Andre Williamson and the Powerhouse Christian Fellowship International. Please join us next time for A Fresh Word.